What's up guys, it's Austin from Yu-Gi-Oh! -Oh Theory. Today I'm coming at you guys with my DDD deck profile. Oh god, sorry I had to burp. Um, I bet you're wondering why I'm doing the deck profile and Chris did the structure deck opening. Well, we both made DDDs and we dueled for just to see who got to do the deck profile. And we dueled and I won. So, um, this deck has been doing pretty good against all my friends. I've beaten, uh, Monarchs, Despots, Exodias, Blue Eyes, um... Um, I beat Synchrons, uh, we didn't, I didn't realize I beat him until I ended the game, and I remembered that, uh, one of my cards allowed me to do piercing damage, and I attacked a defense position monster with, like, six grand, and he only had, like, 5,000, uh, like, a health left, and the defense position monster only had, like, 200, so, I didn't realize it until the duel was over, so, I guess he won, because I didn't realize the effect, but even though it was a mandatory effect, I'm not exactly sure how you would call that. But uh, anyway, let's get into the deck profile. Uh, first, you run two DD Savant Kepler. This card's really good. Uh, whenever you normally special summon it, you add a dark contract from your deck to your hand. Uh, that's really good just for getting you know dark contract at the gate and chaining and uh, all the different uh, what's the word I'm looking for combos you can do with that. Uh, next, you run DD Lamnia at three. Uh, DD Lamnia is really good. It's the new tuner. That we've gotten for the DDDs. Uh, what this tuner does is, if it's in your hand or graveyard, you can discard a dark contract or DDD monster, special summon it from that, from whether it's special summon it. And uh, this is really good because if you just used it for a synchro summon and it's in your graveyard, uh, you can just bring it back out. And then, but if after you activate the effect where you bring it from your graveyard to your hand by discarding, uh, it gets banished. Well, that's kind of a bummer. Next, you run two DDD Oblivion King uh, Ragnarok. He's really good. Um, whenever you normal special summon him, you can special summon another DDD from your graveyard. So if you just normal summon him and you have another one of him in your graveyard, you can special summon another one and then use the one that you just special summoned, use his effect to special summon another DDD monster. That's really good. Um, and it's not a once per turn effect, so you can do that as many times as you can get him back on the field, which is uh, really good for this deck in my opinion because you can overlay for an 8, and the overlay for 8 is really good. Uh, you only run 2. Um, slimes. A lot of people would disagree with me that you need three, but you really don't because there's the spell card um, Dark Contract with the Swamp King and Forbidden Dark Contract with the Swamp King basically does the same thing. You only need Slime and uh, Necros for the start of the game. After you get those first few fusions on the field and you get your uh, Dark Contract with the Swamp King and your Forbidden, you don't really need them anymore. Next you run Necros. Uh, by the way, Swirl Slime, um, you use it and another DD monster in your hand, send them to the graveyard, you fusion for a dark, for a DD monster. You can also banish it from your graveyard and special summon a DD from your hand. Uh, Necro Slime, um, you can banish it from your graveyard and another DD monster and fusion for a DD fusion monster. You run two DD Savant Thomas. Savant Thomas is really good. Uh, what he does is if he's normal special, I mean if he's uh, on the field actually, you can destroy one of your scales, then special summon a DDD monster from your uh, deck. So you can special summon Oblivion King and do the combo with special summon another wing and then just more out of the extra deck and then overlay for eights and stuff. Uh, you run two DDD uh, Rebel King Leonidas. He's really good if you don't have a, a, a arc on the field. If you're about to take effect damage, you can special summon him. You don't take any damage from it. Uh, run two DDD Proud Ogre. I only run him to get out uh, Clear Wing and... That other level 7 synchro I have, I don't use the DD level 7 synchro. He's not that good. I only run one uh, Savant uh, Copernicus. I couldn't remember his name there for a minute. Copernicus. Uh, whenever he's normal, special summon, you send a DD from your deck to your graveyard. Uh, that card's good if I didn't run a 1 for 1 and a Twin Twister and a Lightning Vortex and uh, a Foolish Burial. I only need one because there's so many different ways I can get my DDs from my hand to the graveyard or my deck to the graveyard. I only need one. So it's a really good card, though. I'd say that. But uh, that's it for the monsters. Now on to the spell cards. I run three Dark Contract the Gate. What this does is um, you add a DD from your deck to your hand. This is also continuous. And then you take a 1,000 during your standby phase. Then you run two Forbidden Dark Contract with the Swamp King. What this does is you can special summon a level, uh, well, no, it's not a level. You can special summon a DD monster from your hand, but its effects are negated. And you can also fusion summon using monsters on your field or in your hand as fusion materials. 
and that's really good. Uh, you and you also take two thousand during the standby phase for him. Next, you run two dark contract with the Swamp King. Not to be confused with Forbidden. This is Forbidden. This is regular. Uh, what this does is you can use monsters in your hand field or your graveyard to fusion summon. But if you use the ones in the graveyard, they get banished. And it's only a once per turn effect. So you can't just do that continuously. It's like once per turn you can do that. Which uh, it would make it a lot better if it wasn't once per turn. But I understand why they do it. Because it would be highly abusive. And um, yeah. Next you run two Allure of Darkness. I don't think three is good in this deck because you banish a lot anyway. And I would like to get a fusion monster out of banishing my cards instead of just more cards in my hand. Um, what you would do with this is if you have a clock hand, you do this. But other than that, I wouldn't really use it until you really needed to. Next, you only run one Twin Twister. Obviously, discard a card, destroy two Trap and Spell cards. You'd discard like Lamnia or Necros. Uh, Lightning Vortex, discard a card. Destroy all face-up attack position monsters your opponent controls. It's like a Regeki, but this is better for this deck because you want to discard a card that you need in the graveyard. One hand destruction for the same thing. Discard Necros and Lamnia, draw two cards, you know. One foolish burial, send a Necros or a Lamnia to the graveyard. A one for one, send a Necros. Uh special summon a Kepler so you can get your uh, dark contracts. That's it for the spells. This deck has a really heavy spell and trap lineup, mostly spells, and I really like it like that. It's, it reminds me a lot of Dark Magicians. Dark Magicians have a really heavy spell and trap lineup. Uh, next, you run two Dark Contract with a Witch. During your opponent's turn, your monsters gain 1,000 attack. Yeah, it's just, I think it's just Fiend-type monsters gain 1,000 attack. And uh, you can also discard a Dark Contract or a DD monster and pop one of your opponent's cards. And you take a thousand in the standby phase for that. Uh, run two escape from the dark dimension. Escape from the dark dimension. Uh, you just special summon a banish card. You banish a lot of your high level monsters in this deck sometimes, so it's good to get them back if you really need them to do other stuff with them. That's what I really like about it. Only run one DD reroll. This makes it where your dark contracts can't be destroyed by card effects. Uh, that's also really good. Um, and when it's, when it's sent to the graveyard, you can banish it, shuffle three of your banished cards back into the deck. That's also really good. Uh, DD Human Resources, you can shuffle, uh, three cards from your hand, field, or graveyard into your deck. Then you add two DDs from your deck to your hand. Only run one contract laundering. This is, uh, like say you're in your stand, like in your standby phase. You have four dark contracts, and then you have this face down, and you don't have any monsters. You flip this face up, activate its effect, um, destroy all of those before they burn you for damage. And then you draw four cards, and you gain a thousand for each. So, you, you like, say you destroy two dark contracts, you draw two cards, and you get a thousand for each. Uh, that's it for the main deck. Um, now on to the extra deck. The extra deck is a 15-card extra deck, but this extra deck is very flexible. Besides the DD monsters, I think my DD monster ratio is pretty good. Besides the only one Oracle, because I only have one. Uh, that's really a bummer, by the way. <laughs> I run um, two DD Duo Don King Kali Yuga. Uh, he's really good. Whenever he's um, synchro summon, you can negate, you negate all card effects on the field. And also, you can just detach uh, XC's material. Destroy all trap and spell cards on the field, and you can attach another one to add a dark contract from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, one Oracle King Dark. What Oracle King Dark does is, if you were to take effect damage to your life points, uh, you gain that much instead. I run three DD Dragon King. It's like Dragon Bang King Beowulf. I think that's his name. He's the new one. He's really good. Uh, if a DD monster would attack, it does piercing. Like a defense position monster does piercing. Once we turn during the standby phase, you can destroy all trap and spell cards on the field. It's really good if you're about to get burned for a lot. Uh, two, uh, or it's like Wave King Kaiser Ragnarok, I think, because there's two different Ragnaroks. There's the extra deck one and the main deck one. This is obviously the extra deck one. Uh, what he does is, if this monster attacks or is going to be attacked, you destroy a DDD or Dark Contract card on the field. Pick another monster that your opponent controls besides the attacking monster. Equip it to him, and he gains attack equal to it. So say you're doing a, uh, a mirror match, and they have a Kepler, and then they have one of him. You attack the Kepler, use his effect, pop a dark contract, 
steal their Ragnarok, equip them to him, and then he's at uh, 64,000 attack, and they take 64,000 directly. Because I cannot tell you how many times I've dueled someone and they just left their Kepler in attack position. I've done it before, too. It's really easy to forget about Kepler. Uh, 2D, um, Flame King Genghis. He's okay. I don't like him that much. Whenever he goes to the graveyard, you just add a Dark Contract from your deck to your hand. And then he has some other effect, but I never use it. I, don't, I never bring him out, really, because he's just, he's just like a fallback. Like, one time I was dueling my, uh, Aaron's Monarchs. And he banished, like, my entire extra deck. And all I had was, like, two of him and, like, some other bullshit. So I just had to deal with him. Um, I run two DD Curse King Siegfried. He's really good. If a, uh, like, a, you can target a spell or trap card that your opponent controls, its effects are negated. Um, and that's during either player's turn. And when this card gets destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you um, gain a 1,000 life points. So that's really good. Run one Stardust Dragon. So that someone activates the effect, you banish this, negate it, bring it back during the end phase. Uh, one hybrid dragon archfiend, destroy all, uh, I think it's attack position monsters on the field. One clear wing synchro dragon. If, uh, I think it's, if this, if a level five or higher monster that activates the effect, you negate the activation, destroy it, and he gains attack equal. And then if a level, uh, if an effect is activated that targets a level five or higher monster, you can negate it, uh, and if it's a monster, you just you attack, you activate. I mean, you add its effect to you, to I mean, you add its attack to clear wing. I cannot talk today. Uh, run one, um, side frame Lord Zeta. He's pretty good. What you do is, is um, once per turn, you can banish one of your opponent's monsters and banish him to the end. I mean, to the standby phase. So if you're trying to OTK somebody and have like one monster in the way and it can't be destroyed by card effect or battle, just you know, banish it, attack directly for what you have. And then uh, that's probably a game with this deck because this deck OTK is like so bad. But uh, yeah, that's it for the extra deck. Uh, that's my deck profile, guys. Um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Um, by the way, thanks for 38 subscribers, I believe it is. I checked like 20 minutes ago, so it might have went up uh, until then, so I don't really know. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate all the views we've been getting lately, like on a lot of our videos. Like, I think the Monarchs are at like 1700 or something like that. The Dynamists are at like 13. The Red Dragons are at like 13 or 14, something like that. Just a bunch of crazy numbers that I never thought we'd get to on this channel. And, uh, guys, I really appreciate it. And everyone at Yu Gi Oh! Theory appreciates it. And, uh, thanks for watching. Peace.